Hello, Blaze Radio listeners. I'm Zach Bradshaw. You're watching Blaze Radio's exclusive coverage of the South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin, Texas. It's going on this weekend and throughout the week. And today, I have the honor of speaking with Michael Mabbitt and Luca Rosenberg-Lee, the film creators behind the new film, Any Other Way, the Jackie Stain Chain Story. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, how's the weather over there in Austin? It's beautiful. Glorious. Yeah. We're coming from Toronto, so it's especially uh, beautiful. Absolutely. That's awesome. No, no snow in Austin. I'm guessing. No, no, no snow. All sun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it's pretty comfy. Well, guys, it's a very special week for you guys. You just had your last premiere there. Um, describe to me the atmosphere in the theater, watching your the watching your movie kind of manifest and come to life in front of your eyes, and watching the watching the whole audience react to it. How was that experience? really nice you know they it was really well received people loved the, all of the elements that are part of this film the rotoscope animation the phone calls with jackie the archive her personal archive of the of photos and you know her, her the autobiography and the other elements that we have in this film um i would say yeah the atmosphere was both happy through with laughs and also sad it's got some uh sad moments but uh, you know o overall blended together and people seem to receive it really well yeah a lot of tears a lot of laughter but the good kind of tears i think you know like it's um i think it's quite an inspiring story like i think it's a bit overwhelming and stuff like that so it's and feeling that with an audience is just amazing and hearing it our the moderator for our first q a um uh was crying after the film and was having trouble getting out the first question which I'm going to take that as a really good sign, but it was, it was lovely. And Jackie, this film is such an intimate story with Jackie's voice telling it. And, you know, I think everyone feels a connection to her when they see it. And it's, so it's, it's quite intimate and personal. And, and so it's been emotional all around in good ways. Definitely. That sounds absolutely phenomenal for the audience. Um, any other way, the Jackie Chain story reveals the extraordinary rise to fame, sudden disappearance, and resurgence of trailblazing black trans soul singer Jackie Shane. Now, obviously, as you mentioned, this is a very, very sentimental film, a very emotional film. Um, was it? Would you ever get caught up in your emotions while creating this film? And what did you feel while while filming and creating this 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 movie? I'd say definitely, okay. you know, lots of uh, lots of emotions, like especially, you know, as a I'm a black trans guy learning about another black trans creator. It was it was emotional, both in really good ways and, and in challenging ways, you know, to see her struggling and to or to hear of her struggles, but also to see the joy, the excitement. It just gives hopefully not just black trans people, but everyone an empowering idea of like what could be accomplished in your life and how you know, self-confidence and, and and drive how far that can take you. So it was definitely uh, emotional all, all over the place, yeah. but again, in, in the best ways. And, you, you know, this film, um, it just everyone that worked on this film, there was such a personal connection to Jackie. Either they had heard of her and wanted her story told or hadn't heard of her and needed her story to be known to other people. And so, and because of the animation, which was rotoscope, there was some elements of it that was um, kind of a traditional narrative film um, um, story and shoots and I would say after almost every shoot within, within each shoot people were just weeping you know because um, um, it was such we all felt such a personal connection to Jackie and I you know I started working on this with Jackie um, for a year before she died and so and I loved her dearly and so to be able to bring this to the screen uh, throughout the whole process I mean, I've cried buckets of tears. I've cried liters of tears, um, joy, sadness, everything throughout this thing. So and I, I hope that translates onto the screen, you know. Well, that is so special. And Jackie Shane was known as one of the pioneers of 1960s soul music. Um, and she just died in February of 2019. So we're coming up from about, about a little bit past the uh, the five year anniversary. Was this film kind of like a like a um like the release date of it? Was it kind of like an homage to you know kind of like celebrating her her the anniversary of her death? I think that's coincidental. Yeah, no, it's it's completely coincidental. Like it was an homage to Jackie when she was alive, and uh, you, you know the timing of this when when I first spoke with her. You know, seven years ago, we always thought this was the timing of this right now was so important. And over the seven years that Luke and I have been making this film, 
the timing because of what's going on politically, etc., has just been more and more, unfortunately, more and more and more important. So, um, yeah, the timing is is now because it's now, and it's because when we when we made it. Yeah, we said it best. It is, uh, you know, a time in our country with a lot of um, political um, kind of uh, discrepancies and between what people can can see and, and and view other people as. And I think there's a lot of hatred in this world, obviously. And so um, what did you guys personally learn through that creation of this film? What did you learn from the eyes of sort of um, being transgender and, and you know having to deal with so many different hardships because of that? I mean, I learned that it's so important to have courage with ourselves i mean one thing that jackie was amazing the fact that she got up there you know in the 60s when there was not even a language for being transgender it was just like they just thought that you know she was gay or just even that language there was very limited and the understanding was very limited so i think for me i, I really learned that it's really important that we no matter who you are no matter what discrimination you face you find a way to love yourself and to not let it hold you back from your dreams. For a long time, I thought I couldn't even be a filmmaker because I was like a black trans guy and like, how would I have success, you know? And so it was, it's just inspiring to see someone who, 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 who pushed themselves and, and cultivated their talents and didn't let discrimination stand in the way, basically. That is so incredible. Again, and you guys persevered through a lot. Describe to me the film process of this. I mean, obviously it took multiple, multiple years to make this film, but um, was there ever any like any really uh, big hardships with creating this film? And what 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 are kind of kind of describe those to me? The initial hardship was uh, was when I started. It was finding out whether trying to figure out whether Jackie was alive or dead, and then when we found out that she was alive, it was about a year of trying to get through to her. Um, and then once she agreed to talk to me, it was a year of talking with her, gaining her trust um, and uh, and and convincing her, asking her to do this film with us. Um, and that is what what um, resulted in all the hours of, of, of audio tape of our conversations that we had. Um, and then um, maybe Luke can talk a bit to why then it takes a little while to it took us a little while to finance this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one of the reasons why the film took a bit of time was for a long time, you know, people thought that, you know, stories that center trans heroes were too niche and uh, it was going to be hard to find its voice. But with everyone that's come together, we hope that we've, we, we've shown that this, this life, she's more than just a trans woman, you know, talented musician and some of their lots of hurdles along the way as any filmmaking process is. And then obviously when Jackie passed away, it was like, how's it going to be made without her? Hopefully, you know, I know Michael was hoping she would sit for an interview, but we use rotoscope animation to bring her to life and then just just kept pushing, kept pushing through to make the film that we, we knew that the film could be. That is so incredible. And you had a chance um, to really get close with her. Um, what, what, are, what, are, what were her views on this film? Or was she like, I'm, I'm sure she's a little like more, um, she's had a little more maybe like hesitant to do this film. She was an intensely private woman and a woman who for for many reasons um uh the she wanted to be herself and didn't want that to be manipulated and so you know um part of part of the year-long relationship that we had was her not just telling me her life story uh it was telling articulating what a film about her should look and sound and feel like and what an audience should feel like after after they watched it. Um, and so she kind of really laid laid a lot of it out and um, and her voice and her message and and what she told me was obviously the the, the, the guiding light for us, you know. And so I, you know, God, I wish she was here to see it, but she's not. But I I I, I think and I hope and pray that she would be happy with it. And and I suspect she would because we were just very, very, very true to her voice and to what she wanted. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. That's so incredible. So, I mean, obviously, so many different messages to be brought from this film. I mean, there's just, uh, you know, themes of love and respect and being yourself and, and pushing through. Um, but what do you think hope or what, do you, what is your hope for uh, modern viewers that they, when they watch this film? What do you what do you hope they can take away from it? Yeah, I, I mean, one thing I hope that they can take away is 
people who haven't maybe had that much exposure to what well, won the music. I hope that they listen to the album or we hope so, but also that, you know, people can start to see trans people as more well-rounded, you know, that it's not just their gender that makes who they are, but that, that they step away and think, well, I, I didn't either a, I didn't know that about this person, which a lot of it in the film people won't know, which is partly why we made it. Um, but B that they'll also just have a different perspective on gender, on themselves, on, sexuality even on just any of those things that sometimes people um we get caught up in binaries and i and hopefully this film can break some of those binaries and you know jackie jackie told me repeatedly she didn't think that evildoers were motivated by hate she thought they were motivated by fear and fear to be true to themselves and um and jackie encouraged people universally that she met to be true to themselves and and she also, and so I hope that's a, a takeaway, and that is inspiration and strength. If Jackie could do it, then then we all can, you know. Um, um, but there was so much joy. She didn't. I. She's taught me a different way to engage with with people that I that maybe don't accept me or agree with me. And, and you know, Jackie, there's so much laughter in our phone calls and in this film, and. You know, she thought people that had certain views were fools and she had no time for them and she laughed at them. And I think that is a, a hell of a lot better way than maybe engaging with them on Twitter or something like that, you know? So I hope, I think there's a guiding light of how to conduct ourselves and be more loving and accepting. Sure. Well, I'm with you there. I hope more people listen to your music. Um, She is a Grammy nominated artist. And so that kind of speaks for itself. Her music was fantastic. Um, She really did make a name for herself. And so I hope that I'm with you guys that uh, people can start to appreciate more of her work nowadays. I think that's very, very special. So, um, well, guys, I mean, it's a it's it's a it's a huge film um, for you guys personally. But um, now, you know, now this film kind of gets circulated. Um, what do, What do you think the South by Southwest Film Festival brought? to this movie premiere. How do you think the South by Southwest Film Festival helped you guys? I mean, it was really exciting to find out that we were gonna bring Jackie's story back to the South. You know, she's from Nashville. She grew up during Jim Crow, escaped Jim Crow and moved to Canada where she felt a lot more free. But with everything that's going on politically, it's really nice that South by has decided to showcase this film, to honor this film. And uh, I think we need more stories like this, especially in, uh, especially in the South. And I can't do, I just want to reiterate the music. It always comes back to the music. music. It's how most people discovered her. And, uh, and so to be at South by Southwest with an extraordinary, extraordinary R&B singer who breaks your heart, heals your heart, and makes you want to dance and be at a festival that's that amenable and loving of music. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Do either of you have a certain uh, favorite Jackie Shane song? I mean, any other way is amazing. The, the, I have to say, in when we were uh, when we were going through her extraordinary, extraordinary archive, which was like a documentarian's treasure chest that we that we discovered, um, we found a uh, an acetate recording uh, of a demo um, that she had done that was she had written, recorded live to the floor um and never heard never released and called uh hey mr cool guy which is just like it, uh, one of the many moments of tears was playing this surrounded by all of jackie's stuff and but again uh, uh, no matter what the circumstances are it's just a killer beautiful song written and arranged uh and performed by one of the best you know so but any her live album is amazing yeah, I mean, yeah, the live album for sure. And then, um, I mean, uh, Raindrops. Raindrops. Yeah, become one of my favorite songs, actually, which is in the film, kind of right early at the beginning. Yeah, it's amazing. I agree. That is so incredible. Um, And and you kind of mentioned it already, but um, like new discoveries that you, you know, had while making this film. But were, what, what was like the biggest new takeaway? I'm sure you learned so much about her and her life. But was there anything like surprising to you, maybe about like the the policies she lived in, maybe like the time or where she lived exactly? I know she was up in Toronto for a little bit, um, but anything like surprising do you guys learn about her? <laughs> um, well, uh, 
there was a, a, a she'd written an autobiography, um, which was a handwritten autobiography, never published. And that was uh, extraordinary. And she was such a and this was written in the mid 70s, early to mid 70s, when I think she was going through a very, very difficult time in her life. Um, and uh, I was talking to her, of course, you know, 45 some years later. And when I talked to her, she was just an incredible power um, and she was happy and she was out in the world. And so realizing that she'd gone through a harder time than than anything she had articulated to me, I think was surprising. Definitely. Her marriage. Yeah, for sure. We didn't know she was married and, um, and, and finding all those pictures was just really, right. really amazing. And then um, I guess also one thing we cover in the film is that uh, the woman she calls her mother was actually her aunt. And uh, we get into that in the film as well. And, you know, as an adopted person, I find that that's really interesting because it just shows that, like, you know, you don't need your birth parents to feel love. And sometimes it's actually not your birth parents that make you turn you into who the person you're going to be. Yeah, you're. I mean, and you said you said it best. There's so many different like discoveries. I mean, you're you're finding like photographs, like different pictures, familial bloodlines. How did you ever decide like how to how to kind of scale it all down and put all of this into one movie? How did you possibly put it all into one film? <laughs> yeah, for a for a film about somebody who passed away who only um, performed on television once. You know, when we were pitching this, it was like, how do you tell this story? And then uh, by the end, it was like, how do we tell this story? There's just so much of it. Um, but again, I think we, Jackie's voice, Jackie had such a an aesthetic, uh, like she was elegant and demure and dignified. And, you know, that was kind of our guide through all the pictures, our approach to the rotoscope, our approach to, you know, how this film should feel and move and and the aesthetic of the film in general. So you know, we we lived and breathed in a in a in transcripts of Jackie in the albums that she left and all the photos that she left. A lot of hard work and, and the the blessing to have an incredible editor to work with and our friend Mike Mon. Um, but you know, we were in the edit suite for over a year. You know, um, and uh, so yeah, a lot of hard work and with Jackie guiding us. Yeah, I second that. That is so incredible. Do you know if um any of Jackie's uh, I don't know like maybe family was able to attend the, the premiere at all? Was that no, but not to this one. But um, we'll definitely see them at uh, I we'll definitely see them at uh at an, at a festival soon. Yeah, they're 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 coming to the next one, and uh, and they're they're an extraordinary group of people, and they've been so supportive. And really, the film in some ways is them discovering Jackie um, and they're just they've been so amazing with us and it's been such a beautiful relationship so they couldn't make it to, to, to this festival but they're coming to the next one and I am so so excited to sit in the audience with them and for them to get the flowers and for them to 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 feel the love of yeah. an audience for Jackie and it's palpable so yeah I think it means a lot to them. Well, that is just so incredibly special. Again, you mentioned that you're taking the show on the road now. Um, what's next for any other way the Jackie Chain story? Yeah. But I think that we have a, a festival run, which is great. Uh, and it will be on, on uh, we've only um, sold it within Canada right now, which is exciting. Um, and there'll be a theatrical run in Canada. And, you know, South by is kind of the start of, of getting it out there to streamers in the States and theatrical in the States, hopefully. Um, but I, I think I, it, it feels like this film is going to have a long, long run um, um, yeah. in many different outlets. So we will keep you posted. And this film will be having a very long lasting impact. Thank you guys so much for your time today. And really quickly, just for our Instagram audience, could you could you guys describe in your in your um, in, in your perspective? What is this movie? Just for a, a very like direct, you know, what is any other way? The Jackie Shane story. <laughs> Any other way, the Jackie Shane story is a tapestry and a mosaic of a life well lived in music, and uh, it's about being true to yourself in any situation that you're in. That was Why I turn the camera on him? <laughs> Beautifully said.
That's beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time today. Um, have so much fun in Austin. Again, beautiful, beautiful storytelling in this one. And I just cannot wait to see where this movie goes. And congratulations to you guys personally. And um, have so much, uh, have so much success along the way. It's gonna be so much fun. And just thank you for letting us experience this ride and just experience the life of Jackie Shane. I know that people are going to love this film. And I'm sure they already have. You mentioned the people at this the premiere. So um, thank you so much for letting us all experience this. This is a beautiful movie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zach. Thanks for, for, for bringing some light to this. Really appreciate it. Great yeah. conversation. You guys are absolutely incredible. Have a great one. And, uh, enjoy enjoy Austin. Stay warm. Uh, stay cold, I guess, up in stay cool. Toronto. But, yeah. <laughs> stay weird. Stay weird, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, man. Bye. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care.